Coach John Cooper and General Manager Julian Brisois. Media, please raise your hand if you have a question. We'll start with Steve Wino, Associated Press. Hey, Julian. You obviously worked for, for the Canadians for many years and, and know of their success from years ago and decades ago and helped with Steve Eiserman build this team. I'm wondering if you can kind of compare the success that the, your team, the Lightning, have had in recent years to kind of what Montreal has done and, and, and really what Mark Bergevin has done in recent years to build that team. Um. Well, I, I think ultimately the, the, the biggest thing we have in common is we both right now are managing teams that are vying for the Stanley Cup. We're both in the finals. Uh, and I think Mark would probably say the same thing. A lot of people need to do a lot of work to, uh, a lot of people need to do a lot of good work in order to build a good organization, and a good program that ultimately will lead to uh, having enough good players to, to form a good team. So that's, that's probably, uh, key is you know both organizations have really strong ownership passionate fan bases uh good coaching uh strong support staff and ultimately really good players and that's why we're going to be playing uh and and uh facing each other uh in in the stanley cup finals this year joe smith the athletic julian to kind of follow up a little bit on that just um what kind of influence that your time in Montreal have on kind of the GM you are today in terms of the things you try to help build here and is there anything I could mention the other day like there's things that you brought from the organization little things you guys do that might um, be similar to what you guys did there yeah well when I worked for the Canadians uh, I, I I was very fortunate I was very young and I, I to be completely honest I wasn't bringing that much to the table I was learning a lot more than I was contributing at that point and uh, I was very fortunate that there were so many great alumni around the team. Uh, you know, Bob Ganey eventually came a couple years after I joined the team, and obviously he was a huge influence. But you know, I remember you know Guy Carbono was around, and Rick Green, and Renan Manasson, and Pierre Mondou, <laughs> and a lot of the guys from the '70s were still around. Uh, Regan Hull, Mr. Belvo was still around, and actually, uh, when I ended up getting my first office at the Bell Center. Uh, his office was right next to mine. Uh, he wasn't there necessarily on a regular basis, but every now and then he'd pop in and and just to interact with him and uh, and all of those great alumni. And and I, they were so generous with me. I asked them a lot, a lot, a lot of questions and they were very generous in sharing their experiences and, and I got to learn from them. And eventually when I decided to, uh, pursue another opportunity and end up here in Tampa Bay when uh, when Steve and I started putting the, the program together here uh, obviously he was coming in from a, a great organization the Detroit Red Wings and they had had a lot of success and so he was bringing those lessons to, to, to our management group and I was bringing experiences and lessons that I had learned in another great organization to Montreal Canadiens and we kind of put all of those experiences together in trying to build uh the, the team that we have here and and the organization that we have here mary fiello tampa bay times hey julian when you and steve first saw yanni gord then back in 2014 you signed him to his contract and he plays his first full season in 2017-18 what were some of those early memories that made you all take a shot on a guy like him and did you ever think that he turned into such an integral part of this championship caliber team and that third line's identity you never know with young players right you 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 invest in them you sign them you bring in bring them into your organization because you see something in them and you hope that it comes to be uh and if i'm being completely honest i i would not have projected him to be the player that he is today uh what we did like though was he was a very good skater and he was very skilled uh and he had uh for a, a, a smaller player, he's very strong physically, and he had some compete in him. And uh, once we brought him into the organization and I got to know the person and the competitor a little bit more and, and the professional that he is, then I could see uh, why he may end up being more because of his work ethic, uh, his passion for the game, uh, his drive to be the best player he can be. Um, and today, like I'm so impressed by the player that he is, and so consider myself so fortunate that uh, he chose our organization and is one of one of the players on our team now, helping us helping us win games. Greg Wyshynski, ESPN. 
Hey there, hey, uh, Julian, kind of the same uh, lane as the Yanni Gord question. When, when you uh, drafted uh, Braden Point in the uh, third round, uh, did you ever think that he'd develop into the kind of dominant player that he is today? And are there parts of his game that have developed that you maybe didn't anticipate would be as great as they are? Well, the credit for, for drafting Braden Point really goes to Al Murray and our amateur scouting staff. Like They put together uh, our draft list. They put in the time to get to know the players and compare them and, and invest you know, thousands of hours in a year uh, traveling, watching games, watching film, asking questions uh, of coaches and, and teammates and the players themselves. So all the credit really goes to the amateur staff in terms of us selecting Braden Point in the third round. Uh, Obviously, Braden Point being the player that he is today, most of the credit goes to him. He put in the work. Uh, why did he slip to the third round? Because his skating wasn't uh, probably at the level that you would want it to be at that time for a player of his size. And that's why he wasn't drafted in the first round or the second round. Uh, we were fortunate enough to get him in the third round. And then, you know, we really hit the jackpot. Again, it comes down to the character of the person that, that we drafted. A lot of the time, we put a lot of emphasis on, on the character of the players that we bring into our organization. Are they going to fit in? Are they going to be the type of competitors that are going to continually be striving to get better? Every day they come in to be better than they were yesterday in hopes of being the ultimate, you know, player that they can become, whatever that potential is in each player. And, and when they come into our organization, they find that they're surrounded by like-minded players and right, like-minded coaches and, and managers and support staff. That's kind of the culture where we're always <clears throat> looking to get better and we always want to get better and we always want more. And uh, I'm, I'm obviously very impressed by the, the player that he is today, the, the man that he is today, the competitor that he is today, uh, his skating. Uh, it's funny to say today that you know, his skating is why he slipped to the third round when he's arguably one uh, of the best skaters in the world today. Chris Johnston, Sportsnet. Hi, Julian. You know, obviously you have a lot of great players in the prime of their careers signed long term, but I'm, I'm wondering when you look big picture at your job, how hard do you think it's going to be to to keep this team at the top of the league in a, in a flat salary cap world? Well, I'm very much focused on uh, getting our team ready for game one, working with the coaches and, and our support staff to make sure that we can eliminate distractions. We're one of two teams that can still accomplish more this year, and that's where our focus is at right now, trying to make sure that we take advantage of this opportunity that, that is still available to us to accomplish more with this season. We can do two more questions in English, and then we can do some French for Julian. Dan Rosen, NHL.com. Hi, John. I'm going to do this again to you. Uh, <laughs> you get to watch Julian, but no, I really do have a question for you. Um, so much, if you look at the stats between Carey Price and Andre Vasilevsky, they're like eerily similar how good they've been in these playoffs. And at least publicly, so much is made of what Carey has done and what he has meant for Montreal. Yet for you guys, it's all about the team and the power play. Is there a take it for granted element here with Vasilevsky? Not with you guys in general. Is it internally but maybe externally like do we not are we not realizing how good Vasilevsky has been in these playoffs I don't know like you guys have to answer that I mean we know how good he is what he means to our team um but the attitude in our room it's, it's like a collective group um I, I think part of our success has been um with that trying not to rely on Vasilevsky and I think there's parts of years past where it was like we need the goalie or we're in trouble and you need in the end if you want to win you need everybody you need your power play you need your penalty kill um you need your five on five you need your goaltending and and when that's all working together um that's what i feel is like the sign of a, of a good team and i think montreal's got that going on right now we have that going on because everybody's not on every night and somebody's got to pick each other up in saying that um, we know what we have in our goaltender. Um, we've see, watched him grow into the winner he is, the competitor he is, and and we, you don't get to this level uh, unless you've got great goaltending, and hence why there's both goalie statistics are the same, why both teams are still playing um, in large parts because the goalies have been great. John Romano, Tampa Bay Times. Julian, along those same lines, you were in Montreal when Carey Price was drafted. 
what were the expectations back then and, and how has he uh, met them over the years? What, what's his uh, place in hockey history? Well, obviously, he was a blue chip prospect, which is why he went fifth overall in the draft. Uh, and at the time, our group considered him to be a generational uh, prospect at the goaltender position. And, and to now that draft was, what, 2005? So we're 16 years later uh, to see that he has realized that potential. Uh, uh, you know, he, he's got a Hall of Fame career if he retires right now. Uh, like that's that's just the reality, and I I know that uh, everyone in our in that organization they they watch Carey, they see his commitment to excellence, they see how hard he works in the off season, how committed he is to being the absolute best, how it drives him, how that's that's what drives his life. Uh, they see how he works in practice, uh, they see how he competes in games, and then how he performs in games. And for all of those reasons, that's why I'm sure they all believe that he's the best goalie in the world. Uh, we look at Andre Vasilevsky and what he does for us. And, and for the exact same reasons, that's why we're such huge fans of Andre Vasilevsky. And, and we think we're very fortunate to have him on our team. And like Coop said, like they're, they're at the top of their game at their respective positions.